I'm reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the, the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. We three kings of Orieta, I wonder how many people have actually got the wrong impression of what the Bible story actually says from carols like that, mm -hmm. that we sing and enjoy singing. It's a wonderful carol. Um, but there are no kings mentioned in this passage. There's certainly not three kings mentioned in this passage. And um, it does say they came from the East, so it's clearly influenced by that. But it is a fascinating passage. Um, and reminds me how we have so often blended the Christmas stories, Luke's version mm. and Matthew's version together, and how good it is to read the passage on its own as a whole, as a story on its own, without all these other things that come in. And it struck me in this mm. one that there's no mention of a stable. Not at all. Um, no. Just no. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Yeah. As it's very straightforward. Matthew has none of that. That's all, that's all Luke's account, mm -hmm. together with the angels and the shepherds. Here we've got something quite different. Uh, a couple of things happening here. One is this, who is the king? The king of the Jews and the, uh, the, the king of the Romans, or the king appointed by the Romans. And we're wondering who, this is the question, who are you going to worship? And of course, this is what Matthew's Gospel, and in fact, all the Gospels are setting out to answer. Which king are you going to, uh, are you going to worship? Mm. Who and is really Lord? Mm. Yeah. And what an amazing contrast. Mm. The king, the real Lord, in, in this passage is a humble child. Mm. Mm. Um, recognized, not by the people who should have recognized him, not by the Jews, not mm. by Herod who claimed to be the king of mm. the Jews, but by these so wise men, sages, whatever they are, who came from the east, which I think probably means uh, total foreigners. And I always think of this particular passage in the word Epiphany, which is the Sunday, of course, we're celebrating, the feast we're celebrating now. Epiphany, which means to, to manifest, to make, to make known, to show forth. This is God's word going out to the rest of the world. And often a moment of great insight is yeah. what we associate with sure. that word epiphany. epiphany. So yeah. as they knelt, I thought it was quite graphic, as they, you know, they offered, them, offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, mm -hmm. a very, uh, an amazing picture of these wise men with their, with their, gifts, with their gifts presenting to... Um, and did you notice the end of verse 10, overwhelmed with joy? It's a lovely phrase. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we can hold on to that sense of joy, not just through the 12 days of Christmas, but actually take it into the new year. We've just started the new year, we were just about to. And um, 2010, be overwhelmed with joy, the love of God in our lives as we take our own gifts, bring our own gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, whatever they are, place them at the feet of the Christ child. 
and, and be overwhelmed with joy.